Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Lenas. You are now watching More Than 20 Days to Jam, a series containing more than 20 episodes which covers all the topics in Jam syllabus. Each episode comprises detailed class, questions, and homework. The questions and homework are from the Flash Lenas Jam application. This makes the app a requirement for this class. Visit Google Play Store or flashlearners.com to get the app. Do you have trust issues? Reach me on any of my social handles for activation guide or inquiries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. This is episode number 17 of the 120 Days to Jump Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be putting finishing touches to motion as a topic. In the last two episodes, we introduced motion under gravity. The force of gravity is the force that brings all objects down. How do you know that you are dealing with motion under gravity if you are told that a body dropped from height? When you drop a body from height, if this is height and you drop a body from height, the initial velocity is equal to zero. And since we are dealing with height, it means that A becomes G. Because when it comes to height or vertical distance, we deal with acceleration due to gravity. That is what is acting on the body, not the linear acceleration. If this is true, it also means that instead of V is equal to U plus AT, U is zero. V becomes A T and A is G. Therefore, V is equals G T. For a body drop from height, the velocity is equals gravity times time, as you can see here, because A becomes G in Newton's laws of motion or in Newton's equation of motion, and U is zero because it dropped from height. From here, we can say that T is equals v over g or u over g what does it mean the time to reach the ground when an object is dropped from height the time for that object to reach ground is the velocity over acceleration due to gravity and from the second equation of motion v square is equals u squared plus 2as since for motion under gravity u is zero and a is equals g it therefore becomes v square is equals 2gs and h is equals ut plus half a t squared since u is zero ut becomes zero times t that is zero and a becomes g which gives us h is equals half gt squared ladies and gentlemen anytime you see a question in linear motion or motion under gravity or in motion and you are told that the body was dropped from height these are the formulas for you and if you are told that a body was thrown up or a body goes up and you are asked for the time taken for the body to come down which means time to go up and come down that is time of flight so for a body thrown to height and allowed to drop down time to go up or time to come down is velocity over gravity. The time it takes to go up is the same time it, it takes to come back, which means if you multiply this by 2, you get time of flight. Therefore, time of flight can be 2u over g or 2v over g. And for a body thrown up and also allowed to come down, time of flight for the full motion is the square root of 8h over g, where h is when you are given maximum height. So, if you are not given angle and you are asked to find time of flight and you are given height, you use this formula. Now, if the object comes down from a height, we are not talking about the time to go up and come down. The time from height to come down, you can use time of flight is equals the square root of 2h over g. And these are the formulas we already explained earlier. And for simple harmonic motion, if you are given distance 
to be something like this and you are asked to look for amplitude what you simply do is compare to the general equation this is one of the general equations if you compare here and here it simply means that the amplitude is equals 0 0.5 amplitude is maximum displacement from mean position if you are given a wave this is the maximum displacement from mean position this is your amplitude and the time to complete one full oscillation is the period time for one to wave if you are asked for angular velocity comparing here and here wt is equals 2 pi t therefore t will cancel t w becomes 2 pi that is how you simply compare and these are the other equations we mentioned earlier now look at this for a spring or mass spring system if you are asked to look for period period is t is equals 2 pi root m over k for a mass spring system and for a pendulum period is equals 2 pi root l over g 2 pi root l over g which means the period of a simple pendulum depends on length and it depends on acceleration due to gravity and for a loaded test tube or for objects immersed in a fluid or in water the period is equals 2 pi root m over rho g a density times gravity times area and v is equals w r for what circular motion and acceleration is equals w squared r or v squared over r and force is equals mv squared over r that force is the centripetal force it is the force required to keep an object in a circular motion these are the formulas you need for motion and we've solved questions before now we've also introduced other formulas if you understand up to this point then you don't have any problem so long motion is concerned in jam now let's look at the questions a stone of mass 50 grams is tied to the end of a string of length 0 0.5 meter and this is well round in a horizontal circle of radius 0 0.5 at a constant speed of 20 meters per second that is velocity the tension in the string is dash we are given mass to be 50 grams and generally we solve using mass in kilogram so grams to kilogram that will give you 50 over 1000 this should be 10 cancels 10 then 50 divided by 100 there will be zero so zero point put an imaginary zero here to have 50 50 divided by 100 the two go that is another zero add imaginary zero here we now have 500 divided by 100 and that will give you five so this is 0 0.05 kilogram and the length l is equals 0 0.5 now this is wire around in a horizontal circle which means we are dealing with circular motion and the radius is equals 0 0.5 meter radius is equals length and velocity is equals 20 meters per second we are asked to look for the tension in the string now for a stone around a string for a stone tied in a string and made to revolve around the tension is equals the centripetal force Anytime you are giving a stone and it's wired around in a spring, the tension is equals centripetal force. And what is centripetal force? Centripetal force is the force that keeps objects moving in a circle. And it is mv squared over r. So since force is equals this and the tension is equals centripetal force, it therefore means that the tension in the string is mv squared over r. So what is m? 0 
times what is v? 20 meters per second. And v square is 20 square over what is radius? Radius is 0 0.5. So the tension is equals this. 20 times 20 is 20, 20. 0 times 0, 0. 0 times 2, 0. 2 times 0, 0. And 2 times 2 is 4. So this is 400. So tension is 0 0.05 400 over 0 0.5. Now, 0 0.5 is the same thing as 5 over 10. And 0 0.05 is the same thing as 5 over 100. When you simplify that and multiply, you will get 40 Newton. So if you take it to be 5 over 100, because you have to move 2 times to get to the end, you take it to be 5 over 10. You say, okay, 5 over 100 times 400 over 5 over 10. So these two zeros cancels these two. 5 times 10, 5, 10, 15, 20. So that is 20 divided by 5 over 10. This is 20 times 10 over 5. This is equals 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 20 times 2 is 14. So what am I doing? I'm teaching you how to divide, how to multiply, and how to answer fractional questions without using a calculator. You notice something. The length was not used. When you are given questions in physics, it does not mean that you will use all the data or parameters given. Simply use the ones that you need and move on. With your life. Roman figure 1. Jet propelled aircraft. Roman figure 2. Rocket propulsion. Roman figure 3. The recoil of a gun. Roman figure 4. A person walking. Which of the above is based on Newton's third law of motion? Newton's third law of motion says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Meaning as you are standing on the ground, your weight is acting on the ground and there is a force which is opposite that is balancing your weight. That's why you are not going down. If you shoot a gun, power, the velocity or the, the action is the bullet leaving the gun. The reaction is the recoil of the gun because as you shoot, bah, the bullet goes forward, the gun recoils, pushes you backward. This is why shooting a BB gun is for the strong. Otherwise, you shoot and you fall backward. Rocket propulsion and jet propelled aircraft, all these are application of Newton's third law of motion, which says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, there is something I also need to explain. Momentum of any body or object is the product of its mass and velocity and changing momentum if you are changing momentum this is equals final momentum mass times final velocity mass times final velocity minus initial momentum mass times initial velocity this is change in momentum now impulse is equals change in momentum which means this change in momentum it is the as in force an impulse is a very large force that is acting over a very short period of time. If you are given from here that impulse Ft is equals mv minus mu, impulse is, since we are dealing with the same body, or if you are dealing with the same body, mass is the same. So let's pick mv minus u. If change in momentum is equals m v minus u, look at what happens if velocity is 2 meters per second, then there is another required velocity which is opposite to the first velocity. The second velocity will simply be minus 2 meters per second. Look at it. If I shoot this wall bah, at a velocity of 2 meters per second, and the bullet bounces back at the same velocity. 
we can see that the two velocities are the same, but the other one is opposite. So the one that is opposite will be taken as negative. In that case, the change in momentum will simply be the mass, then V minus U. If we take V to be 2 meters per second and U to be minus 2 meters per second, change in momentum will be mass over 2 minus U is minus 2. This becomes mass times 4. Collision occurs when two bodies collide. If you have object A or body A, the momentum of that object is mass times velocity. And if you have another object B, the momentum of the second object is mass times velocity. Which means, before these two objects collide, and this one is moving, and this one is moving, the momentum of this one is M1, V1. If we call this body A, the momentum of this one is M2, V2. If we call this body 2. So, the sum of their momentum will be M1, V1 plus M2, V2 before collision. M1, V1 plus M2, V2. If they both collide, bah, and they bounce back, the momentum is conserved. So, after collision, M1, V1 plus M2, V2 remains. But if in a situation where the, uh, the collision is not elastic, which means after collision, bah, they join together and they begin to move at a common velocity. In that case, they maintain their masses, but they have the same velocity now. That will give you M1 V1 plus M2 V2 before collision. And after collision, you have M1 V plus M2 V. Since the V are the same, you bring out the V to be M1 plus M2. This will be the common velocity after collision for objects that stick together and move after collision. So, if you are looking for the common velocity here, you simply say M1 V1 plus M2 V2 all over M1 plus M2. You'll be given those values. We have some collision where one of them is stationary, only this one is moving. So if this one is here, then this one is coming to hit here. Before collision, the momentum of this one is zero because there is no velocity. M times V, V is zero, this is zero. Only this one has momentum. So that would be M1 plus V1. If after this one comes to hit this one that is stationary, bah, and they begin to move together, they will also have a common velocity. So for two objects that are moving, after collision, they both move together with a common velocity, use this formula. For one body stationary, the second comes to hit it. After hitting, they move together, we use this formula. All these are very important because I may not be able to solve all the questions in the world, but with this formula, you'll be able to solve all the questions. And please make sure you get the Flash Tenance Jam application. After this class, answer as many questions as possible. Answer, answer. The app works offline, you don't need the internet. I've said this over and over and over again. So who much is given should never run away with it. A bullet fired vertically upwards. Look at it. This is upward motion. Reaches a height of 500 meters. Neglecting air resistance. Neglecting air resistance means let's assume that only gravity is acting on the body. That is the rule of projectile motion. We assume that it is only gravitational force acting on the body. There is no air resistance. Because if you put air resistance into consideration, then the values will change. Because air resistance can affect movement. Calculate the magnitude of the initial velocity of the bullet. U is equals equation. Taking G to be equals 10 meters spare second spare so a bullet fired vertically upwards reaches a height now what does it mean if i fire a bullet from here with an initial velocity right and it gets to here at maximum height what is final velocity final velocity v is equal to zero 
which means at maximum height it has gotten to where we want it to be. Now, if an object is at from if, if you drop an object from a height, the initial velocity at that height is zero. When the body gets to the ground, final velocity becomes zero. Take note of all these things. And from our law of motion or equations of motion, the one that is combining height, velocity, and g is simply v square is equals u square plus 2gs. Since the body is projected upwards, as you are going up, you are acting against gravity. Therefore, g is negative, which makes here minus. Final velocity becomes zero. So zero speed is equals u speed plus 2gs. Minus, rather, this minus. So u squared is equals 2gs. The initial velocity becomes the square root of 2gs. When you are given square, to remove square, you find square root of both sides. So this makes 2 times 10 times 500. Ladies and gentlemen, 500 times 10 is 5000. 5000 times 2, that is all. Uh, 10,000. The square root of 10,000 is 100 because 100 times 100 is equals 10,000. That makes option B the correct option. And here, one, its velocity is constant. Two, no work is done on the body. Three, it has constant acceleration directed away from the center. Four, the centripetal force is directed towards the center. Which combination of the above is true of a body with constant speed in a circular track? It simply means that which of the following options is true about circular motion or about motion in a circle? In the last two episodes, we discussed the condition for circular motion. We said that the, uh, the speed is constant. So speed is constant, not velocity. For a circular motion, speed is constant. Then the velocity, the acceleration, and the momentum are changing constantly. Changing constantly doesn't mean they are constant. So they are constantly changing. And it has no work is done on the body. Because work done is force and distance. For a circular motion, no work is done on the body. And the centripetal force is directed towards the center. The acceleration is not directed away from the center. It is towards the center. So only Roman figure 2 and Roman figure 4 is correct. Others are wrong about circular motion. Two cars moving in the same direction have speeds 100 km per hour and 130 km per hour. What is the velocity of the faster car? measured by an observer in the slower car. This is simply under relative velocity. What you simply do is you subtract the velocity. 130 minus 100, that is 30 km per hour. So that is the relative velocity. Not all questions are difficult and not all questions require you to be solving up and down. If a projectile has a maximum range of 40 meters, find its speed of uh, projection taking acceleration due to gravity to be 10 meters per second square. If a projectile has a maximum range, at maximum range, projectile becomes u squared over g because at maximum range, the theta is equals 45 degrees. I'm putting 45 degrees here. Sine 45 times 2 is sine 90, and sine 90 is 1. So range becomes u squared over g. We are given the range to be 40 meter. If a projectile has a maximum range of 40 meter, so range is equals 40, which means u squared over g is equals 40. The speed is the velocity. u squared is equals 40 times g. u squared is equals 40 times 10 because we are given g to be 10 meters. A second square 
So this becomes 400. The u square is 400. We are not asked to look for the square of the speed. We are asked to look for the speed. Therefore, square root here, square root here, square cancels square root. Therefore, the speed becomes the square root of 400. And what is the square root of 400? 20 times 20. That is 400. Making option D the correct option. For simple pendulum, period is equals 2 pi root L over G. A frequency is equals 1 over period. What does that mean? It simply means that the frequency for the simple pendulum will simply be 1 over 2 pi root G over L since frequency is 1 over period. A car of mass 1500 kg goes round a circular curve of radius 50 meter at a speed of 40 meters per second. The magnitude of the centripet centripetal force on the car is that centripetal force is mv squared over r. m is 1500 kg, v is 40, and r is what? 50 meter. So the centripetal force is 1540 squared all over 50 to give you 4.8 times 10 to the power of 4. In other words, 48,000 Newton. The motion of a body is simple harmonic motion if acceleration is directed towards a fixed point and is proportional to its distance from that point. So option C is the formula or the requirement for simple harmonic motion. And this question says, an object moves in a circular path of radius 0.5 meter with a speed of 1 meter per second. What is its angular velocity? And V is WR. And V is linear velocity, W is angular velocity, which means angular velocity is equals V over R. V is 1 meter per second and R radius is 0 0.5. So W is 1 over 0 0.5. That is 2 rads per second. There are so many more questions to solve in the Flastenas Jam application. But as you can see, we've done enough. We can't keep solving questions on that motion when there are more topics in physics. In fact, the next topic we shall be taking care of is gravitational field. So get your flash and jam application, answer more questions on that motion, and look for the questions that require the other formulas we did not use. Please, I am begging, get the app, answer questions. The bad thing is that if you fail this jam, next year you will write again. You are spending more time and every other thing. A year is very big. Don't waste one year of your life. So that is it. See you in the next episode.